Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlet here to do my next installment of the Psy Changeling Sexy Saturdays read along, read a thon thing, whatever it is that I'm calling this project that we're doing. Today we are talking about books 6 through 10 in Nalina Singh's Psy Changeling series. I will not be doing a ton of wrapping up. You guys can go to Goodreads for plot synopses, although we are getting far enough along in the series that I very highly recommend starting at book one, or at least back with my previous video. Book number six is Branded by Fire. This is Mercy and Riley's book. This book kicks off with a bang, literally. <laughs> Mercy and Riley are both dominants within their various like cat and wolf packs, leopard and wolf packs, and they are attracted to each other, dealing with back history and growing up together, but also they're both dominance and that is a thing that they're both having to reconcile and deal with. I really, really enjoyed this book. I really uh, continue to love all of the heroines that Nalini Singh gives us, but I really, really love Mercy and her questioning of like how her dominance is going to affect her basically long-term future and ability to like find a mate and actually establish like a mating bond as it exists in this universe, not just like a lover or somebody to like be with like physically, but actually to like establish that psychic bond. It's very, very interesting. I really, really enjoy Riley and everything. Like I just, it was a very intense book because they're both dominants. This book is very erotic. So that kind of took me off guard, even for the way that like we're working within this series. Uh, number seven was Blaze of Memory. This is Dev and Katya's book. This is the book that I remember the least out of this chunk of books. Basically, Katya is a uh, kind of a Psy who's been programmed by Ming Laban, who then, who's a council member, who that she then goes rogue from, but also she's not really going rogue. She's been sent in to infiltrate the pack and to kill Dev, but he knows that kind of, and basically it's this like, the, the intensity of the narrative comes from this drive of like, what is this? It's very like Manchurian Canada of like, what is the code word? What is the thing? What's the, the, the fuse that's going to light? And then Katya's going to try and kill Dev. And he's not obviously going to let that happen. Or like the pack's not going to let that happen. So she's going to die. And like, that's where the tension comes from. I didn't really love the rest of it. I don't really love Dev or Katya just like in general as characters on the whole. Um, after that, number eight, Bonds of Justice. This is Max and Sophia's book. I loved this book. Uh, Sophia is a member of the J side, the justice side, and Max is like a local detective uh, cop who is familiar with like the pack and who works to like kind of help them keep the peace in this town. And so it had this very like procedural crime drama, um, like Hannibal or um, mind huntery kind of vibe, which is something that I really, really love outside of romance, just like as its own genre and category of thing. So I really, really liked that aspect on top of I liked the, the the emphasis on comfort and relief and, and being able to step back from the justice system that was required by both of these two main characters in such a different way. Number nine is Play of Passion. This is Drew and Indigo's book, Indy. I loved this book. This is another kind of like, um, not like childhood sweethearts, but like long-term colleagues and kind of like Drew has always been pining for Indy and he's never really known how to act on that, but now he's decided it's his time and she is struggling with that because she is dominant in her own way. And so it's like them figuring it out. I love this book. I love Drew as a hero. I love these glimpses that we get of these more like soft power heroes because Drew is not an alpha. He's not necessarily a dominant, but he's he, he serves the pack in a very emotionally important way and provides a release and an advice point and a shoulder to cry on in a way that feels very, it, that is very necessary within the pack, but it is very much so this like soft power. And I just, I love that so, so much. I love Indy having to learn to get out of her own way. This was my second favorite book in this chunk of books that I read behind only the next book, which was Kiss of Snow, which is Hawk and Sienna's book, which we have been watching Hawk and Sienna dance around each other since like literally book one. There's an age gap between them. Hawk is dealing with the fact that he lost his childhood love and this woman with whom he had already formed a mating bond. And as far as the pack knows, that means he is done. He's out of the game. He can't form the mating bond anymore. And Sienna knows that, but she still is falling in love with him. And there's power dynamics because 
she's been adopted into this community, but her family needs her in their own mental web to stay stable. They have to stay hidden. We end this book on such a huge plot cliffhanger in terms of like the vulnerabilities of the pack, the vulnerabilities of the Lauren family, the vulnerabilities and the knowledge that the council now has and like really gearing up these like different sides of war. The books now are like, I don't want to say that like the books in between these have been like filler books because the plot does advance each time but like some of these other books have taken kind of like side streets into like other characters or other like smaller plot lines this book really feels like it is like the punch on the ignition to go for like what is going to come in the next couple books in terms of this like big showdown between the council and the pack and these psi council members who are like defecting and the end of silence and all of these things that are really really building um, and Hawkins Santa's book is a really a big part of that. But I, I adore and it's so powerful to see Hawk, who is this like long time kind of he's an alpha. And so he's there for his pack. But there's a part of him that's kind of closed off and embittered and feeling very cynical. And to watch that fall away and to open up and to watch Sienna have to maybe come to terms with the fact that like there will be this part of him that he can't give. It's just really, really emotionally powerful and built into that is the fact that we've been watching them build this communal history throughout the background of the books um, i like the way and i'm astounded by the fact that apparently nalini saying like is a pantser which are, if you're unfamiliar is a writing term there are two terms a plotter which is somebody who plots out and a pantser which comes from the term like a seat of your pants you write by the seat of your pants you don't make a ton of like plot notes beforehand so the intricacies to which the world building details will come back up and overlap and the character seeds that are planted early on will come to fruition are almost made even more astounding by somebody whose process is not super heavy on plotting and intricacies of making that happen. Granted, she's like seven, 15, 17 books into the series, so I'm sure by now she is plotting more than she was previously or has made notes obviously on previous books and where those things will probably go. However, it is impressive as an artistic feat to know that that's her method and to still see the way that these books fit together like puzzle pieces. Um, to end this book or to end this video the way I ended my last one to do a quick rundown of like plot character ships that I loved the most. Uh, my and We will go this time from least to So this book basically goes in order kind of only one so my least favorite book of these was actually book number seven which is as i mentioned is dev and katya's book this is a book i remember the least about i just their relationship didn't super click for me i didn't hate dev i didn't despise him but like their relationship just didn't really click for me the uh, advancement of the larger plot in that book was a little bit more stagnant and i just like never really felt as invested in them or in that book as i did in a lot of the other books that i read specifically in this chunk after that comes book number six, Branded by Fire. This is Mercy and Riley's book. These, these are those dual dominant books or book. And I just really enjoyed their relationship, but there wasn't like a ton that really happened or that was going on. I also felt like because of the intensity and the quickness with which we hit the erotic content, it left me a little jarred. And like, this is me we're talking about. So like, that was a little... Uh, interesting to witness happen and then after that we pretty much go in order my next favorite book right in the middle of the pack was number eight bonds of justice right af after that my second favorite book like i mentioned play of paradise which was drew and indie and my absolute favorite book so glad to have finally gotten the chance to see it kiss of snow with hawk and sienna i am so excited i've heard the books like 11 12 13 really are like where the plot kicks off where things really pick up i also know that it's around like book 13 14 ish that we start to meet the bear pack bear changelings i'm here for that i'm super here for that i'm very here for that uh so yeah those are my thoughts on books six through ten in nalini singh's Psy changeling series let me down but let me know down below if you've read these books what you think uh, of these books of this video series of Sexy Saturdays as a whole, what you've been reading romantically or otherwise lately. If you've watched this far in the video, leave me an emoji just so that I know you were here. And uh, as always, you can find me all over social media to talk books. Until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have happy reading. Bye guys.